pronounce the funny differently <coughs> for uh, reasons. For example, sometimes uh, the accent, the dialects, the personal accent, and so on. How about the phones? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, yes sir. Phones as the physical representation of sound. Very good. Phones are the, the physical representation of sound. Yes, sir. Of a phoneme. Good. Good. How about allophone? This is also the physical representation of phoneme. What is the difference between allophone and phone? Allophone and phone. Yes? Here, physical. Physical representation of a phoneme. While phone, physical representation of sound in general. We still do not know that whether this sound or this noise uh, is a phoneme or not. We're starting. We're doing our discovery procedures to know whether this phone is a phoneme or, or not. Yes. Now let's start over with details. <coughs> Phonology is the systematic study. Language. Not, not language. The systematic study of sound in a given language. It is of two types, segmental, segmental, segmental phonology, and supra, segmental phonology. Segmental phonology deals with, yes? Phonemes in <coughs> phonemes in oscillations. Phonemes in oscillation. For example, ba, ka, da, etc. While suprasegmental phonology <coughs> deals with utterances, phonemes, phonemes, <coughs> in combination, phonemes, in combination. For example, the utterances. The utterances like for the, which is for the, etc. Utterances above the phonemes. Above the phonemes. Now, sometimes we pronounce a phoneme differently or with variant forms. And this, these variant forms are called allophones. Allophones, allophones, which are variant, variant forms or different forms or actual realization of a funny of a funny. Yes, for example, phoneme, le, which has two forms, dark and light. And light. Dark and light. Now, what is segmental phonology? It's a branch of phonology. 
with phonemes. With phonemes in isolation. In isolation. Very good. Now, uh, uh, what are the allophones of a phoneme? The variants of, of phonemes which occur from the variants of this? Of phonemes. Of phonemes. All right. That's enough for such a definition. Now, uh, sometimes we reach to these allophones through what is called phones. Phones. What is called phones. Phones. Yes. Is the uh, uh, meat? Yes. Yes, please. The physical representation of sounds in general. Good. Now here we have phonetics, and here phonology. Here we have the raw material, and here we have systems, the study of raw, of raw material. Now here we have phones. Here we have phones. When we start studying phones, we'll be in this area. In between, transferring from phonetics into phonology. Phonetics, the general, the general human speech sound signals into systematic study peculiar to a particular language. Okay, so here we can put phones. Depending on these phones, derived from phonetics, depending on these phones, derived from phonetics, we'll get allophones, phonemes, segmental phonology, and then we'll move to suprasegmental phonology, and so on. How to describe these phones? How to describe these phones? Yes. Yes. Yes, please. Very good. Before distinctive features, minimal pairs, minimal pairs, and then distinctive features. So, what are the distinctive features? Yes. A set of features. Yes. Phones and. Very good. Yes, Haider Talib again. It's uh, uh, words, a pairs of words or sounds. This is minimal pairs. Minimal pairs are only one phonological <coughs> elements. Good. Such like bin and bin. And Very good. Distinct meanings. Very good. Yes, Ittifa? Uh, any features that distinguish one phoneme to another is distinguished. Yes, any feature or set of features that distinguish one phony from another. This is called distinctive. Yes, for example, if we have the utterance pit and yes and bit. According to minimal pairs, pairs, the difference is in this first phoneme. So since we have two different phonemes, then we have two different utterances or two different words as you wish. This is according to minimal pairs. Sometimes, sometimes we cannot distinguish between the one phoneme. If we say, pe, pit, stop, pen. So here we need to use distinctive features. features. We need to describe further, to describe each of these phonemes further. Now if you put 
the phoneme P and here the phoneme B. Then we need to uh, 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 find the features of, e of each of these two phonemes. Now if we talk about uh, you know the pl yes, place of articulation, manner of articulation, voicing. voicing, these criteria according to which we describe a constant sound. Yes. Now for pe, place of articulation, place, place. yes. Levial, yes. Levial. Be. Yes. Levial too. Yes. Manner of articulation. Yes. Huh? Manner of articulation. How we pronounce them. Huh? This is voicing. How we pronounce these two uh, uh, phonemes? The place, lips, labial. Lips. The way or the manner of pronouncing these? By the lips. Huh? Yes? Consonantal? Voice. Huh? Voice or voiceless? No. Well, the place of articulation, the place of producing these two phonemes is lips. And we call it labial. Well, the manner, the manner, are they stops? No. Plosives? Huh? Nasals? Plosives. So, plosives. And this is be, pe. Some pl uh, explosion. Plosive. What, what about? Uh, voicing here voiceless and here Voice. voiced well in terms of distinctive features we only have these features and we use the uh, plus and, and, and minus signals here plus 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 minus Plus. So, what is the distincting feature? Is the voicing, which is minus in pe and plus in be. That's how we b b distinguish pe from be. Sometimes within pe itself, within pe, the phoneme pe, sometimes. <coughs> Uh, an aspirated, an aspirated, or aspirated, co-articulated with other uh, phonemes. Now, pe. In this phonological context, which is at the beginning and at <coughs> preceding the uh, phoneme e, in this phonological. Context. Is it an aspirated? Yes. Yes. Is it aspirated? No. Aspirate. Which means an aspirate. Well, aspirate pe. Pe. Now, is it <coughs> co articulated pit? Pit. What is the difference between pit and pet? Pit and pet. This might be too much for you. Well, this is articulated. Now we can say here the distinct, the distinctive feature is the an aspiration, the an aspiration, and so on, and so forth for all the distinctive features. It is uh, a little bit complicated system. Let's move to suprasegmental phonology. Yes, again, suprasegmental phonology. Yes, yes please. It's a branch of phonology. A branch? Which 
deals with characters of sound? Characteristics of sounds. Yes. Above phonemes. When we want to combine, when we want to combine phonemes, yes, there are some rules. Yes, please. Very good. Very good. So suprasegmental phonology, suprasegmental phonology deals with uh, levels of tone, intonation, rhythm, uh, loudness, pitch of sound, stress and stress syllables. It's called prosody. Yes, it, called, uh, it is called prosody. However, it can be applied to all types of speech. Suprasegmental phonology. Phonology deals with utterances, which means phonemes in combinations. Combination, which deals with phonemes in combination. Phonemes alone, as we said, phonemes alone. The yes, the smallest segments of sound have nothing to do with meaning. Have nothing to do with meaning unless they are, unless they are combined, unless they are combined. If we have the phoneme, de, uh, a, and <coughs> gef. These three phonemes have nothing to do with meaning unless they are combined. combined. Unless they are combined. How, how would we combine these phonemes? There must be kind of rules of combination. Rules of combination. Now, according to these three phonemes, we would have at least two utterances. Uh, dog and dog. Dog and uh, god. Sometimes, we pronounce this with stressed Stress. syllable. Sometimes unstressed syllable. Sometimes with a, a, a high level of tone. Sometimes with low level of tone. These var variant levels of tone and intonation are dealt with suprasegmental supra phonology. Sometimes when we pronounce this or other utterances with different level of phone, uh, the meaning will be changed. The meaning, changing the meaning in particular languages lead to what is called, if you remember, tone, huh? tone uh, language. So what is tone language? Yes. Tone language? Yes. The meaning is through the pronunciation. Through the level of tone. Very good. It is a language or the group of languages in which meaning is changed or is influenced by the, uh, the uh, level of, intony of, uh, of tone. And Chinese is the best example for these languages. Sometimes we do not change the meaning. We change the function, the, the, the discourse function of the sentence. For example, if we say, uh, Ahmed. is 
here. Ahmed is here. If you pronounce this utterance with level kind of tone, it will be? Yes? Is it a statement, question, etc? Statement. statement. If we pronounce this with low and then high question. levels, question. Ahmed is here, question. it will be question. question. So this is the level uh, uh, called intonation. Intonation. And such languages like Arabic and English are called, yes? Uh, intonational, intonational languages. Now, what what are intonational languages? Yes. Yes. Intonational languages are languages that can only be affected by the level of intonation. The level of intonation. There is no influence for uh, the level of tone. The level of tone could have influence on uh, uh, isolated phonemes, isolated phonemes in terms of stress and unstress, but uh, uh, along the whole utterance, there would be no uh, influence. Yes. So, uh, all in all, phono uh, suprasegmental phonology represents phonemes. Yes? In combination, very good. Now, metrical phonology. Metrical phonology. Yes. <coughs> yes. Thank you. Yes, Haider. There's a word or a group of words that has its own rhythm and interplay uh, of uh, surprise and unsurprise. <coughs> good. Metrical phonology. Again, is a branch of phonology included with uh, uh, suprasegmental phonology, uh, phonemes in combination, which deals with prosody. Good prosody of language. Now. Why don't we uh, include it in suprasegmental phonology and make them one uh, 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 branch of phonology? What is the difference? Yes, Haider, again? Uh, the difference is that the supra suprasegmental phonology, phonology can be applied to, to all, all types of speech. Uh, since it deals with utterances. With utterances, yes. While metrical phonology is specialized with... Lit literary language, very good. Yes, particularly prosody. First, what is a prosody? Yes. Yes, yes. 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 no? It's a branch of metrical language with you, a literary language. Very good. It's a branch, yes, I already have? Yes. It's a branch of literary language which deals with meter, rhythm, yes, and all literary devices used in poetry and other types of uh, literature. A prosody. We call it in Arabic. Al Arud, Al Mil Arud. We pronounce. We 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 uh, pronounce words. Not in the way they are written. In the way they are pronounced. Good. Now within prosody. Within prosody, what is there? Yes. First one is rhythm. Rhythm. Yes. Then meter and other uh, devices. We are not concerned with them uh, in this class. Yes. What is rhythm? Yes, good. Very good. Interval. Very good. We define rhythm uh, as interval of time 
between stressed and unstressed syllables. Stressed and unstressed. There is another definition which is Another definition for rhythm? Yes. yes, different, if you remember, different levels, if you remember, different levels of stressing, different levels of stressing. If we have the word, as we uh, have mentioned, happy. Yes, happy, and then happiness or unhappy unhappiness. Now, these three utterances have different levels of, of stress. Yes. The first one could have stressed at the beginning and unstressed at the uh, second syllable. The second one, which has happy, happiness, three syllables, could have stressed one here, unstressed one here, and yet another stressed one here. The same with the, with the third one, uh, which has four, four, stress four stress syllables. Stress two, unstressed, and two, stressed. These variant levels are represented by... Now, how would we measure these levels, these stressed and stressed syllables? What is the unit of measuring rhythm? Foot. Very good. Yes, we call it foot. Foot. Foot is the stress and unstressed of a given. Atoms. It is used to measure uh, rhythm. So that's all what we're concerned with in, in terms of metrical phonology. That's all for me. If you have any question.